So welcome again. My name is Alberto Guardone. I'm chairing the third session today. Uh, next speaker is uh, once more Luca Abergo from Politecnico di Milano. He will talk about uh, uh, an open source framework for uh, FSI, including all uh, uh, open source software. Luca, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi again to everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Uh, this presentation is going to be a bit more soft than the first one of this morning. And we're going to talk about fluid structure interaction for helicopters. So we did it combining three different software, SU2, Ambidine, and Precise. So as I said, our target is to have a specific fluid structure interaction framework for our elastic simulation of the rotorcraft. We want it to be modular, open source, and uh, highly specialized, and especially user friendly. So, we decided to use S2 for its capability to provide high fidelity urans and uh, run with rotating reference frame that are really useful when we talk about uh, helicopters in over. And since we have uh, a good mesh deformation technique to handle large deformations. And the other software for the structural part, it is also developed in Polytechnico. It, is a, it performs multi-band analysis with, uh, with capture linear and nonlinear dynamics. And uh, it is specific also in this case for Rotorcraft. The combination of the two software, it is done with this external library, which is called Precise, and it's developed in Java. So a few words about Ambidine, which maybe you don't know it. Uh, it is it uses a, a beam model, but a, a very specific one where we have non-linear finite elements like beams. It means that they have a six degrees of freedom. For each node, we obtain the free displacement and free rotation. And we don't need the assumption of a zero shear stress deformation. We solve the Newton Euler equations and we add the kinematic constraint using uh, Lagrange multiplicators. And uh, we obtain the rotation with uh, a, a predictor corrector scheme. So we start with a fixed matrix R0, where we predict the rotation, and then we correct it at each time step in a, in a way which is not algebraic, and it is really cheaper computationally. The equation evolves in time with a LL stable multi-step integration. So you can solve that SI in two different ways. The standard one, it is the monolithic. So you solve all the function of the fluid, the domain part, and the interface condition in an unique system. Instead, we decided to implement a partition approach. This gives us the flexibility to change the fluid and the structural software every time that we want, without changing the adapters. And so in this way, you can use a more specified software for each domain that you want to solve. And um, in this case, uh, you have to. Sorry, I did not understand what you want. I think here is something that we need. Model for the structural part? Yes. Uh, it is a beam model, but with a node with 60 degrees of freedom. What we call the helicopter, which This is general, it's not specific for a uh, general presentation, so it's not specific for the helicopter in this case. Ah. For Then we, we will arrive to the helicopter later. And uh, so we exchange the forces and the displacement between the two softwares, and we impose the interface conditions when we exchange them. So they are not solved inside the, each of, of the two domains. And to do so, we need precise because precise gives us data mapping. So it helps us to, to map the forces from the the fluid domain to the structural domain. So we pass from a 3D domain to a one. Width, and we need some technique. Two are provided by precise. One it is called RBF, and the other one is called nearest projection, which needs the grid connectivity. We can handle also different time steps, so we can make about the structural solvers quicker than uh, the, the fluid part. And we can we implemented both the implicit and explicit coupling. In case of implicit coupling, you start solving the fluid domain, you pass the forces to the structural domain. So, and the next step, when you solve the fluid domain at the time n, t, n plus one, you are using the forces of a previous time step. And this can introduce some numerical instabilities. 
to solve it, we implemented also the, the implicit coupling. So we insert a, a Newton method for the single time step and the precise prevent, uh, provide some acceleration techniques. From a coding part of point of view, you need to implement two adapters. The one in S2 is done in C++, the one in MDDime it is done in Python. Why we say that this framework it is user-friendly? Because the entire simulation it is handled just by one file in XML format, that is going to call the, 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 run, the run of a single simulation automatically. You just have to compile this XML file. Okay, first I uh, propose this test case to, value, to verify that the code is working correctly. It is a simple 2D test case that provides also the match. You solve all the equations and we are at low ratings. In this case, the structural model it is really easy. We use beams with two degrees of freedom, so we do not uh, handle the rotations. And precise has been used to couple different software. Also, open form with Talbot, with Phoenix, and the past also has to do with Phoenix, but all the other structural models are 2D. So, only in our case, we use Beam, and as you can see, we perfectly capture the frequency, but not the maximum displacement, which is a bit lower. And we think this is related to the simple structural model that we are using. So, we performed another test case, which is typical in literature. It is a square with a, a, an horizontal flap. Here we are at higher Mach and higher Reynolds, and we solve the Brown's equations instead of Euler. And also in this case, uh, the structural model it is a, a simple beam with two degrees of nodes, two degrees of freedom, sorry. Uh, we performed a mesh convergence and a time step convergence, and we accept the grid when it gives us a, a relative error on the frequency and the displacement, which is lower than 1%. Here are some images of the Mach field during the period. So you can see the flap oscillating with a large deformation. But more significant are these three features. Here you have the tip displacement in time and the frequency analysis. We compared our results with nine other studies, and we are perfectly, we perfectly match the results of the other studies in terms of frequency, displacement, and stored number. So this work started because uh, Another group of research developed uh, the structural model for the Hart 2 helicopter and they tested it already and validated it with wind tunnel data. So, what was missing was the FSI simulations. In this case, it is a fully multi body model. We are in front sunny condition with a certain advanced ratio. But what is stopping us? It, the problem it is that we have a very simple 1D grid for, for the structural domain and we have a fully 3D grid for the fluid. And so we are losing some information about rotations. The particularity of uh, MB9 is that it uses this six degrees of freedom node that can give us the orientation of each node. So we decided to introduce some dummy nodes. We project each node of the center of the blade to the trailing edge and to the leading edge of, uh, of our blade. But this node, we're going to not have inertia. So we're not going to impact the structural simulation, we're going to use them only for mapping the informations. So we can pass only forces and displacement, but from the fluid, fluid simulation, we obtain also the torques and the couples, and from the structural simulation, we obtain also the orientation. And so we pass it in this way. So if we come from the fluid, we have the forces on the three nodes that you can see, but only the center one is part of the structural model. And so we translate with these three forces in uh, three forces and three couples. And in the other way, you obtain from a structural model the free displacement and the free rotations, and we translate it in free displacement in all the nodes of the skeleton. The technique used to pass it from S2 to Ambidine is RBF, and in the other with a local support, instead from Ambidine to S2, we use nearest projection. Nearest projection in this case works better with RBF, but uh, it requires the grid connectivity, and we don't want to pass the grid connectivity of the fluid grid since it is uh, too, too expensive a computational network. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Luca. Uh, if there are any questions from, from the audience, 
from home. Yeah, because the first one that they did was in version four, but we did for version six of Maxi Chip. So not the last one, but the first one. Yes, the adapter is, is has been coded a new adapter. And you adapt okay. version six of us yeah. Any other question? Do we have a question from uh, online? Maybe I can answer. Well, if you have a uh, high twist, uh, you know, you can think about bigger. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this will be. Yeah, but, yeah. But yes, if we can apply this also to wind turbines uh, in case of large rotation and formations. And we, we are testing it. The MB9 model is already validated for the NRI5 uh, wind turbine. And it can handle also large uh, rotations. So we, we see that the, the, the mapping is working. But we 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 need to validate the results for the full size simulation. Yeah, it is open source. 